Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, we're going to continue tonight um, teaching of the Word uh, on divine healing. And uh, I'll tell you what, this is, it's really important to hear the Word uh, of God on any subject, because unless the Word of God is preached, uh, there's no faith, there's no faith for you to participate. And uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to do a couple things tonight. First, I'm going to, I want to talk about um, the, our, we'll receive tithes and offerings here in a moment, but um, I want to establish just a statement that faith, faith is the conduit for all of God's grace into our lives. What does that mean? What's a conduit? Think of a pipe. Think of a piece of PVC pipe. Uh, something that gets water from here to there. Or um, also, uh, sometimes sometimes we think of a, a conduit as something that is only to bring refreshing. But how many of you know you're really glad that you have some indoor plumbing? And conduits, just as much as they can bring fresh water, they can remove waste. They can remove bad things. And, and faith is the conduit. It's the conduit for all of God's grace, all of God's saving power, His kindness towards us, His kindness, uh, His, His favor, His turning towards us. Uh, it, one of the, the, the root word of that word, grace, um, in, from, from Greek that translates to, to Hebrew, really just means God's extended arm towards us. It's the root word. So, like, so, so sometimes God's extended arm towards us is to, to, to like, give us something. But sometimes God's extended arm towards us is to get something out of our eyes. You know, I, I, I don't know if you've ever been doing construction or mowing lawn or something like that, and run the weed eater, and uh, I don't wear glasses, run the weed, you know how like, oh, wear safety glasses. For, for everything, you've got to wear safety glasses, right? And so, but, it, but it's happened a number of times where something flies off and gets me in the eye, and I would go to my wife or my son or whoever's around. It's like, hey, I got something in my eye, and I can't get it out. Have you ever done that? And what do they do? They, they, put the, they extend their hands toward you. To be, it, it, and that's really what grace is. Saving power is a hand extended toward you, both to, to give you something, but oftentimes God's hands towards us are to remove things from us. And I think it's important that we know that, that, that like he's the healer, right? He's the one that is able to take burdens. He's the one that's able to lift yokes. He's the, he's the one that not only gives, right, the, the blessings, his blessings, but he's also the one that's able to lift what's too hard or too heavy or what we, where we were without a solution where there was no way his hand extended and in a sense pushed the way you know and so that's just a powerful thought that that faith is the conduit for all of God's hand extended towards you so faith is important and this is why it's so important for us to teach the word on any subject and really not just to move past it. Because faith comes when the word of God is, is heard, but it only remains if I come under that word. So faith comes, but faith comes and faith goes oftentimes. Because, because of an unrenewed mind and because of eyes. And our eyes often will abort the seed of faith. Our eyes will, 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 we will abort the seed of faith. We won't receive that. I mean, that, that's ultimately what's happening in these day after pills. Your body, if, you, uh, if a lady was to have uh, uh, sex and, and she was unprotected or maybe she was raped, whatever it might be, um, she takes something that makes it to where her body won't receive what was it's not like it just kills everything. It just makes it so you don't receive. And, um, and what does that for us oftentimes is our eyes. And we're going to talk tonight not just about divine healing, 
we're going to talk tonight about faith because if we hear and we hear and we hear, but we don't get the mixer involved, faith. The Bible tells us in Hebrews that it didn't profit them, Hebrews 4, it didn't profit them because they didn't mix it with faith. So there's a, just because God's word, though it is final authority, and one day every knee will bow, the question is, when will your knee bow? Will it be today or will it be one day? And so it, this is why we're, we're going we're gonna to talk about t- t- tonight, uh, we're going to talk about faith. Because the word of God, um, it, it's so funny how the enemy would love to oppose the word of God. And the way that he opposes the word of, the word of God, the enemy, is the same way he did in the garden, the same way he came with Jesus, the same way he comes in Revelation. It's so amazing. You see when, when he first showed up, you see he shows up with Jesus, and you see him talking about even in Revelation. What is he doing? He's accusing or bringing the question, a question about what? The Word of God. And, uh, and, and so we're going to, this is, when, when it, it, and I'm not saying that we can't ever have a question or, Lord, teach me, um, but I'm telling you, uh, the enemy, we got to recognize how the enemy works. How the enemy works. In other words, the fingerprint, his fingerprints, and, and, and recognize um, what's, what, what's going on there. So we're not going to just hammer, I'm not going to hammer tonight, oh, questions and this and that. We're not going to talk that way. Um, because I think it's important for us to, 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 um, to have a, not only a measure of faith, but have growing faith. To, to have not only a measure of faith, but not just have weak faith, not have little faith, not ha- but have strong faith, right? right? Have, and, and so we know you can grow in faith. Um, and growing faith, uh, when you receive the Word of God, it, it, His Word oftentimes will explain things through our heart that our head couldn't give word to. And so we're going to look at the word tonight, ultimately about faith. But I wanted to do something um, kind of real quick, uh, and, and I don't mean that real quick, but just concerning tithes and, tithes and offerings and, and ultimately money, okay? But more than money, mammon. I, I got to talk with my son recently, actually just I think yesterday it was. We were talking about just uh, jobs and what you're doing in, in, in your life and, um, and just what your your day to day looks like and and working for money or working for the lord and and so on and so forth and really great conversation ultimately like establishing that I'm not working for money right and so Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 I wanted to just read this passage and then I wanted to just exercise uh, put a put a little exercise to it tonight he he talks about two here he says you can you can't serve god and mammon you either love one or you hate the other. Let's read it. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate one and you love the other, or you'll be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Let, let me say it this way. You are supposed to be under one and over one. This, is, this matters. So it's not just that I don't work for money. It's that money... I stand over mammon. Money works for me. So I come under the lordship of Jesus Christ. So there's two, two masters. But when I, when I come under God, mammon is to come under me. And for mammon to come under me, mammon tells you a lot of things. Money tells you a lot of things. The question is, if you've said you're coming under the lordship of Jesus Christ and you're coming under God, then I have to ask you, have you been telling money a lot of things? Because if money's telling you a lot of things, you're under its authority. If you're telling money some things, you're under God's authority and money's working for you because you serve not two masters. I serve one. So the next time money starts talking to you, because of whose you are, because of as a child of God, as Jesus as Lord, Master, no. I tell you, you will, and this is where you speak to your account, you speak to what, what's coming in, you speak to money. I'm telling you, this, is, this matters. This matters. And, 
Um, this is a passage that oftentimes we're like, yeah, I'm not going to love money. Well, great. Don't love money, but just we're just going to let it just talk all the time and tell us what we can and we can't do and try to still rule or give a tug of war. Like, he, he's, you're going to, unless you come under one, you're going you're gonna to kind of despise both. You're going to be frustrated that God didn't do this. or you're gonna be, you, It's just this. And, and the reality is if you, if you come in under mammon um, or you come under money, it will always overpromise, underdeliver, and, and take more than it ever, ever uh, could promise. So I just saw I had seen this. Um, we can come forward and, and uh, tonight. And we'll, let's just uh, stand again. I know we are standing. But sometimes I think it's good just to get the blood flowing a little bit. And, and uh, we're just going to take authority over, the, over, over finances tonight. Um, and I want you to just speak to, speak to, to money talks to you. So don't tell me you can't talk back. It talks to you. And it, 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 he, he talks about it being as a, as a master. In other words, so we, we need to take authority over, and again, it's the spirit of mammon. It's, it's not just money, like, oh, I'm speaking to my George Washington, or, you know. But we take authority over, and I'm not trying to bind you, mammon. No, I'm saying, I'm saying you, can go, you, can, you can work for me. You can work for me. I'm not working for you any longer. You're working for me. And I'm not trading my hours for you. And so, Father, we thank you tonight. And, and I, I'm just going to pray, but I want you to tell, your, tell money to work for you. Tell mammon to work for you. Father, we, we come into agreement and we come under the lordship of Jesus Christ. We come under and we declare Jesus is Lord tonight. Jesus is Lord of my house. Jesus is Lord of my finances. He's Lord of my family. And Father, tonight we speak forth with the words of our mouth and we tell mammon, you're going to work for us. We'll no longer work for you. Father, we thank you for angels, ministers, spirits. Go and bring that money in. Money, you come to, to us. We're over you. We've been placed over you. We come under you, Lord. And Father, we thank you that you are such a good God, such a good Father. We speak to uh, places where there's been lack, and we say you're going you're gonna to let loose to overflow, to overflow. Increase, increase. I, I, I'm gonna have, I'll have increase. I'll have increase. You have no authority. I have authority. So take your hands off, mammon, off of, off of our finances, off of every bit. I'll devour. Father, we thank you for that. We thank you for it. And we thank you. We do. We, we serve you. Whatever we do, in word or deed, whatever we do, whether you eat or you drink, we're going to do it all for the glory of God. And we do it in Jesus' name. Amen. You can go ahead and pass those buckets tonight. Hallelujah. I'll encourage you this. Talk back. You can sit down, whatever. Uh, talk back. Now, I'm not saying you need to look like you're strange. <laughs> um. But the reality is, the reality is, um, I'm not concerned about what somebody thinks about this, that, or the other thing. Um, I, I'm going to tell, listen, the authority has been given to me. All authority in heaven and earth, okay, has been given to Jesus. He took back and he gave it to us. Woohoo! Is he okay? Everybody? I think he probably something just tipped over. Cords, man, it's a wonder. Have you ever thought the thought of that? It's a wonder that more stuff doesn't tip over with all these cords and stuff. Uh, I'm like, it's amazing. It's amazing. All right, everybody, good back there? Yeah. Do they? Do they? They're laughing. Okay. <laughs> good. All right. You know, it's good to it's good to be able to just let things be. You know. Everything doesn't always have to be perfect. Like, what if something's messed up, you know? Like, sometimes birthday parties just go better if it's okay if they spelled the name wrong, right, on the cake. Like, if you gotta, we got to be okay with, because we're there to celebrate Matthew with one T instead of two, whether it's two Ts or, you know, we got to be okay with that. 
we can't just be so uptight about everything. You know, God is not so concerned about everything being perfect. He's concerned about why you did what you did. He's concerned about our heart in the matter, right? And so I think that's, that's a good thing to give space, you know, to give space for those kind of things um, and really ultimately just keep our, our eyes in view of honor. So tonight we're going to teach on faith. Um, why, don't we, why don't we pray before we get into the Word? Father, thank you so much. And we're praying tonight just simply to use the words of our mouth. And so um, when I'm praying, I want you to also use your words to release your heart or to open your heart and for the Holy Spirit to be the teacher. Father, Holy, we just give you uh, the right to teach, to illuminate. We thank you that your word is a lamp to our feet. It's a light to our path. Uh, as we unfold your word, you said that its entrance would bring light. We thank you for that. And we thank you where there's light, darkness cannot be. And we, we receive your word tonight with meekness, with meekness, not weakness, but meekness coming under with, by, uh, by the exercise of our will. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, to be meek, you really have to exercise your will. And sometimes your will is kind of tough to, you know. You, you know what I'm talking about? Because you see this and you see that. And, you know, anybody had to exercise their will when somebody cut them off in traffic. Or it sometimes being meek in traffic makes you feel like you're being weak, even if you're driving a big truck. Anyway, especially if you have a sticker on the back. That's why I don't have a sticker on the back. <laughs> Actually, I don't know why I don't. I had them, my other one, and this one I didn't put it on yet. All right. Praise the Lord. Mostly because I'm, uh, I'm, I'm actually pretty calm driving, right? Pretty much mostly, well, 90%. <laughs> I don't know what we're talking about other than we're going to talk about the Word tonight. Are you ready? Get your, get your pens and your papers out, and we're going we're gonna to start uh, by this. Um, Romans 10, 17, and I, this is not and cannot be an over-abused scripture, overly used. A, a scripture is, can be, um, it can't be overly used, but it can be abused. And it's abused when it, when it no longer holds the value that it should hold. You know, I've heard it, I've heard it, I've heard it, and so then it becomes like, you know, the couch or the truck or the, the whatever that you've had, for, the old gun that you've had, and it, 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 it's not the same. It doesn't, it's not treated with the same honor. But this passage here in Romans chapter 10, it's talking about salvation. All, all of this, that, that, that if someone doesn't preach the good news of the gospel, people can't be saved. So that, this is the context of faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Like in other words, Romans chapter 10, just 9 and 10, talks about believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth Jesus is Lord. But it says, but how are they going to believe unless somebody tells them? But how is somebody going to tell them? You know, it talks about sending people. It says someone carrying the message. And, and the, consequently, this is how faith or faith, what is faith? It's the conduit, the conduit for all of God's hand extended towards you and me. Okay? And so faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. Man, this is why it's so, so wonderful for us to, to look into the name of, names of God and to look into who Jesus is and who, how we have seen the glory of God in the face of Christ. The Bible tells us this, that we've seen the glory or the goodness of God in the face of Christ. So when we look at Jesus, we see God. Like in Jesus, the Bible tells us that dwells all of the Godhead. The, the, the Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, all in one in, in Christ. So we look at Jesus, we honor Jesus, we celebrate Jesus, we preach Jesus because it's God. It's God. He's God. Okay? Um, so, again, Romans chapter 10, 17, and we're, tonight we're going to talk about faith. And faith comes, how? By hearing the word. But faith doesn't, it, it can come tonight and it can be like, shh, just missed it, huh? It's like this, looking in the bright lights right here. 
You know what I'm doing there? Anybody ever do that? As kids, I remember being shopping with my mom in the stores. I hated to go and shop. I still, I love, I like carrying bags now. <laughs> but I, I remember looking up, and you remember when J.C. Penney and Kohl's were like the two places you could get anything? Like that was the place that was, and Kmart was still around back then. Anyway. But I remember you could look up in the ceilings and you, there was these like lights that you wouldn't really get to see the light unless you were right underneath of them because they kind of had the, they're kind of gridded. Yeah, maybe, okay. And when you're right underneath of them and you look right at the light and you just look at it for a really long time and try not to look at the grid and then you look away, then there's a whole dots. And so you, you try to put that dot on a piece of clothing on a rack further away and you try to get that and that just was something I did to try to entertain myself (laughs) but faith can be like that faith can be like those dots where we're looking for it we're trying to produce it we're trying to grab it we're trying to get it ourselves we're trying to look so hard and produce it but it's not something you produce it's something that comes and you can have if you'll come under that word. So faith comes at the hearing of the word, but it only remains when we come under that word. Okay? Now, let's keep going here. Uh, Hebrews chapter 4.2, we we spoke to that. i just give you that verse again. The good news, uh, it didn't profit them. Okay? Though the same message was heard, it was of no value. Why? Because they did not share the same faith or... Uh, one of the uh, sharing the same faith, the same conviction, the same uh, belief uh, that that the other ones did. So it didn't profit them. They didn't believe what they heard. Okay, so you can hear the word of God and you can go, yeah, word of God, seed of faith. But I see this. Okay, now we got to remember that the word of God. Is spirit. Well, let's get this. We're gonna we're gonna try to teach this on base notes here. All right, uh, let's go to um, Ephesians two eight. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter two verse eight. For it is by grace we 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 maybe quoted this a lot. For it is by grace, again God's extension toward us, right? And, and uh, his his kindness is his favor. But just in other words, where we were weak, where we couldn't, he said, I'm gonna make a way. Right through Jesus, it is by grace you've been saved through faith. That through is that conduit, right? It's that conduit. It's what flows fresh. It's also what removes. It's conduit. It's a flow. It's a channel. Okay, through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It's the gift of God. And so again, this is what's so cool. It's both grace and faith is not of yourself. It's the gift of God. It's you and I, he gives us, and matter of fact, from the very beginning, and it tell, the Bible tells us that God deals to each man, it's kind of like playing Uno, but you're only playing with one card, <laughs> I mean, the measure of faith. And so he's like, here's your measure, here's your measure, you know, here's your measure. This is so cool that it's a gift. He deals to you the measure of faith, and the measure of faith that he deals to every man is enough to appropriate salvation. But it doesn't mean in that measure that that's all I'm ever supposed to have or receive or own. It's that faith is enough to appropriate salvation. And salvation, as I hear God's word, I'm able to receive, to receive more faith grows from hearing his word. Okay. Or coming under his word. All right. Now let's keep going here. All right. So faith, uh, one definition, really simple definition of faith. Um, is this more than just the, it is the conduit of all, all the promises of God. That was just kind of a Nate thing. Um, somebody, I can't remember what the guy's name is here. It is, I don't have the note. Uh, but he said this, faith is simply acting like the word of God is true. Amen. So sometimes faith is an act. Right? In other words, uh, hey, you show me your faith and I'll show you my faith By my works, Paul said. You're going to tell me about your faith? I'm going to show you my faith. There's an action. There's always an action to faith. Okay? Always an action. Um, Again, faith is not self-sufficient. It's not something we produce. 
but is received by coming under the word of God. Now, the unrenewed mind will always question the word of God. The unrenewed mind will always question the word of God. Okay, let's, uh, let's turn real quick to 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. It says this, that all scripture is, uh, and this is out of the ESV, uh, I love this. It's all scripture is, you, you maybe have heard it quoted like this, or maybe you've read it, all scripture is God breathed. I love the ESV, it says, all scripture is breathed out. All scripture is breathed out by God. Why do I, I love that so much because when you read in the New Testament and you see, you know, like in John 6, 63, God is spirit, or you see the word Holy Spirit, or you see the word spirit anywhere, whether it's the evil spirit, okay, it's the word pneuma, and that word pneuma means spirit, it's translated spirit, wind, or breath. In other words, all of those things, they're not so much tangible, you can see the effects of the wind, my breath, you can see or feel the effects of it, whether it's words, I mean, after talking for a while, you could feel the effects of it, you know what I'm talking about cotton mouth either you can't re- you can't grasp it but it, it has great effect right and so it says this all scripture and i just love the, the fact that this speaks to the fact that god spoke the word the bible is the word of god we say it this way because sometimes we just say oh the word of god we're, we're the word oh the word the word we say it this way God uttered those words with his breath. That's just, he spoke it. All, it's God's spoken word, okay? So it's God's spoken, and, and, and it's profitable. It's breathed out by God, and it's a pr- profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Now, this is, this is important to, to acknowledge here. Go back to the, uh, the verse 16. All scripture is breathed out by God. It is profitable. And here's what it's profitable for. It's to show you what you don't know. Mm-hmm. Number one. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of things that you don't know. Mm-hmm. You can't know. Well, because he knows. He's the creator. We've been here. If you've been here for an extended period of time, you might be here, have been here for 80-something years. But let me tell you, the creator knows it all. Okay, so we, that's something that's really important to understand when, when we look at the Word of God. The one who's speaking knows the end from the beginning. He, he know, he, he's the creator. He's the one, and I love this, I, he is, and he is love. You know there's a lot of times there's questions that we'll, that we'll have that love won't reveal. You're saying, what are you talking about? Well, I don't know, like, hey, uh, um, you, what's that spot on your pants there? Oh, I said, oh, I think she sat in something. Really, she had the runs. Would love say, oh, well, my wife, she was having the runs and she got it all over her pants. <laughs> There's an analogy of something that I could, that because of what it would do to cause harm. Now, that's a really just so low analogy, but but sometimes there's things that have happened in our life, things that I've set in motion, or my parent, like somebody had set in motion. Because is God just? Yes, he is. How do why, why, well, how do you know that? Okay, okay, this is good. The Bible said so. Who said in the Bible saying so is who saying so? God said so. So this is, you go all the way back to Genesis and you see that God came down to Abram and he swore by himself because he he could not lie. So anytime you see the word of God say something, you got to know that this truth. God can't lie. So this is really, really important. So there's a lot of times that there will not be answer. Okay. Anyway, it's profitable for teaching. He would teach, but some things he won't reveal to you because, well, he's just. And he's good. And he's loving. And you want to know. And you also want to know what happened and why that was going on over there and why those people were over there and what was going on over there. You like to stick your nose where it doesn't belong. And a lot of times, you and I call that out of the goodness of our heart. But, and a lot of times, we question God's goodness based upon our goodness. 
But can I tell you, there's no goodness in me or you apart from God. So every bit of care that you have for your mom, the little girl down the street that passed away, the uncle that's going through a heart attack, the whatever it might be, don't for a moment assume that you care and you know more than God does. In doing so, we put ourselves in a very proud place opposed, opposing the teacher. Okay? Have, I remember, my, um, I, I, and I've told this story a few times, but I remember my eighth grade math teacher, Mrs. Carlson. And uh, this was Algebra 2. And I kind of had gotten this piece down and this piece down, and, and uh, I was like, okay, I got that. I'm like... Let's move past that, and we're, we're, let's go a little bit. And so then I was like, hey, well, what about blah, 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 blah? And, and she was like, we're going to get to that. We need to do this a few more exercises so we can get to that. So, okay, do 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 right? Hey, uh, well, what about this? Because I'm like, okay, oh, okay, well, yeah, oh, 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 there you go, that works, okay. Oh, hey, what about this? But I hadn't been tracking and so she held me after class because I was disruptive to the class, even though I was asking a question and I was wanting to learn. I was wanting to learn my way based on what I thought I knew. And here, what it was craziest thing about the whole deal was, though I had come to the right solution or conclusion, that the way that I was working my formula it was flawed and it wouldn't carry on to the next step. So oftentimes, what we know, and though we've come to a conclusion that we could see that would work here, that formula is flawed, and it won't allow you to go to that next level. Like, all of math is built. This is one thing that, uh, that you learn. Two plus two, same. That's basic, right? Two times two, four. Basic. But everything is built and so if you get off a little bit in the way that you build something, you're going to get over here. And so this is really important to acknowledge this scripture that you'll see that it's for teaching, but it's also for correcting and for reproof, or actually a rebuke. Like if you don't, if when we open the word of God and you don't get rebuked, time in again, well, taught and like that's like your second thing. It should step up. You should be, our toes should get stepped on. And, and then we should get corrected, which means pointed in the right direction. So it's like, this is wrong. And sometimes you've got to jerk the slack out a little bit, right? Uh, and, but if it hurts so good, you know, it's like getting your back popped or something. like, you know, right? Uh, correcting and for training uh, in righteousness. So the right way. So oh, So much of this we see what the Word of God is used for is... Is not to hug me, right? Or to make me feel good about the decisions that I'm making, or to, it really is to teach me and to show me uh, to look like my father. The, the Bible says that as I behold the word of God, I'm ever changed into his image. And who does the world need to see? More of Nate? More of Jesus. So here, while we're sitting here today, why we're coming is to be equipped, but not just to be equipped, but be to change from what more and more to look like him. Why? Because everywhere we go, he is. And, and it's important that you and I know he's there. So as we're talking about healing, and this is a promise of God, it's important that we would know that where I go, he's there, and his will to heal is there. But, but if I don't understand and receive the word of God as that which teaches, corrects where I'm wrong, points to what's right, and to train me in his way, well then I'm limiting him. And not only limiting him, but, you know, the Proverbs, it says that a name, a good name is better to be sought for than riches. I'm, I'm giving him a bad name. Could it be that we give God a bad name? At times? Absolutely. 
Okay? So this is important for us, to, again, to establish the Word of God is the very breath of God, and it's, it's used to show us what we don't know. So we all know a whole lot of stuff because all i got to do is Google. Anybody know how to change and put, on, put in a different dryer uh, plug? Oh, yeah, yeah, here. Four-prong dryer plug. I know, I know everything based on this. But that's what's so crazy is we've become to the place, place and we've been so trained to think that what we see is actually what we know and that it's truth. In the last little while, uh, in the last few years, it's crazy because we don't know what is true anymore. We're in this time era where you can't trust your eyes. So the enemy's overplayed his hand. And the thing about it is, as a child of God, you're not to be led by your eyes. So if I'm, so why can I look at what happened to Johnny or what happened to here or what happened to here and, and be led by that when that's not, even, that's not even how God leads? First of all, God is a spirit. And his word is spirit. And so if I'm going to follow the leading of God, the children of God are led by the spirit of God. If I'm going to follow where, where God is teaching, if I'm, going to, if I'm going to keep the lead, I'm going to have to follow the Spirit and not yield to my eye. Yes. Now you're saying, oh my gosh, this is, you're, you're like, no, this is, this is, how, why, why do you believe the good news of salvation? Why do you believe that Jesus came in, that you were in need of a Savior? Because well, God spoke here. It doesn't make sense here. The Word of God doesn't make sense here until it's received here. Only when it's received here can it begin to grow and, and, and I'm changed to look like Him. All right? So let's go. John, John 6, 63, you can take this note because I'm giving you these scriptures tonight because it's important. We know that God is spirit. Okay? This is John 6, 63. The spirit gives life. The flesh, it doesn't count. It, it, it's like building a case on something that doesn't count. So, hey, I got to present this evidence. Um, uh, there was a person in a, in a black hat uh, in the dark in this alley, and, and, and it was John. Okay, great. Well, what date was that? That was on this date. Oh, but this murder happened three weeks later. Yeah, but he was there on two weeks before with the black... Yeah, but that... that that's not where he has an alibi over here. You're using evidence that, that it doesn't count. Yeah. That doesn't count. You see what I'm saying? We're looking, but his spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I've spoken to you, they're full of the spirit and life. Uh, so God, we know that the Bible tells us God is spirit. First John, or not First John, First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. This is so key for us to understand. The natural man does not accept. The natural man is unwilling to accept. The carnal man, the natural, the only the natural, the, the, the man that doesn't recognize that you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. You are created in the image and just like in the likeness of God. Okay, this all the way back to Genesis. This is who you are. This is why when someone passes away, they're gone. The body is, this is just my tent. Okay? The person without the spirit does not accept, okay, uh, does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through what? The Spirit. So we quote the Scripture a lot, Proverbs chapter 3. Trust. Somebody quote it for me. Where do we trust? Trust in the Lord with all of your eyes. Okay, trust in the Lord with all of your mind. Okay, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And what's crazy is in the center of your heart, there's an ear. H-E-A-R-T, right? And so God speaks to you as a child of God. God speaks to you. Who speaks to you? Spirit speaks to you. Where does he speak to you? Your heart, the ear of your heart, the hidden man, the inner man of the heart. Okay, and he says, trust there. And lean not to your understanding, to your own, own understanding. 
Now there's understanding. The Bible says there's wisdom of this world, and there's wisdom from above, right? The wisdom that's down here is devilish and divisive. You'll find that the wisdom from down here, you could go here in James, but the wisdom that's down here, it is always bringing division or dividing some, like you from what God says or you from what God has united, right? You, you see this. This is the world's wisdom, but God's wisdom, right, from above. There's a wisdom from above, and the Bible tells us, I think it's Isaiah, his, his ways are so much higher, higher than the earth, right? So is his ways above man's ways, all right? Keep going here. Lots of words here. Proverbs chapter uh, 20, verse 27, it says that the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Again, I don't know what translations we're using here. I don't know it in the NIV too much, but uh, Proverbs 20, 27, it says, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. It searches all the inward parts of the belly. In other words, the way that God leads us is through our spirit, or he illuminates like with a candle. And, and I love this because uh, it, it doesn't say that it's the spotlight, floodlight uh, pointing to. It's more like, I'm going to lead you every step of the way. But I, I love that. I, I love the, and I love even the, the idea that uh, you don't hide the candle lights the house. So it's not such a little light. It's a light that's light enough to light a house. You know? But yet it, it's, it, it, it's so that you could navigate today but not worry about tomorrow and just follow him today. Right? Because when I'm looking, I'm worried about tomorrow... This is where I get off of leaning to the heart and I begin to lean to my understanding unless I'm simply acknowledging what he said for my tomorrow. See what I'm saying? Okay. Proverbs, <clears throat> let's just go ahead and read. Yeah, we, read, we, we quoted that. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your understanding in all your ways. Submit. I love that. It, you know, we a lot of times say acknowledge. What's up? What's up, God? What's up? What's up, God? No, it, submit to him. That's that word. In other words, come under. Lord, what do you say about this? Okay? Check with him. So if you're going to check with him, he is what? Who is God is? Spirit. Okay. So you're going to have to check with spirit. You're going to have to check with your spirit. So check within. Check where he speaks. Okay? Check the word. His word is spirit. There's a lot of times you could ask God something because you're wanting a different answer than what is already written. And you'll find that he, he seems silent. No, he's not silent on the matter. He already said what his will is. God, a matter of fact, this, is gonna be, oh, this would open a whole, whole can here, but God, nowhere in the Bible does it say, tell us that God is silent. He says, call to me, I'll answer. He says, seek, knock, you'll find. He, nowhere does it, but there are times he seems that way because of our unwillingness to yield, because of what he's already said, uh, because of sin that has caused, willing sin that has caused separation where we're like doing our own thing. But God always, he, matter of fact, he wants to be there and, and not be silent so much that he sent one to even remind you and me in the Holy Spirit. So the, be careful what you repeat. That's not the word. Because these subtleties, they sound good, but they're seeds. They're seeds. That when you call God in a time of trouble, I know the Bible says he'll answer, but... I've been saying all my life, and what has been formed in me is the thought, the, which had moved to now a belief, that God is sometimes silent and doesn't answer. And so he's, and we think this way sometimes because we grew up with a dad or a mom or an uncle that when you messed up and you broke something or you did something wrong, what did they do? Hey, sorry, I, I dropped this. Some, some of you still do this to your family. You do some, they do something wrong, and you give them the silent treatment. That's not God. Let, let me ask you this. When you do that, do you ever feel like God? 
Like, in other words, not like God lightning, I'll show you God. It, it's not God. But like a loving father. Mm -mm. I'm going to make you pay by being cold to you? No. That's not who God is. Nowhere does he reveal himself that way. Nowhere when we look at, we see the fullness of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. Did he say, say, say that to Peter, you denied me? Well, I'm going to deny you in front of my friends three times and see how that feels. He doesn't, that's not how he is, okay? So, oh, thank you, Lord. We're going to get to the end. I'm going to only keep you to 8.15, all right? This is, there's so much here, and it, this is important. Faith is important because it's the conduit that everything flows. So let's, um, and I, I just really want to get to the end anyway, so we'll, let's go to John 4. John 4, 24. John 4, 24. Again, this is so important to not just give you a verse, because sometimes it's like water off a duck's back. Like it didn't really penetrate, but to actually look at it. And I, John chapter 4, 24. I, there's so many scriptures, too. If, if there's a little bit of a delay, it's, it's on me. All right. God is spirit, and those who worship him must do what? Worship him and in truth. Worship is really service, right? Our service to him, our finding out, our, our, our coming underneath him, it, it has to, it, in spirit and in truth, okay? So, so, so 2 Corinthians 4.18, if you'll put that one up there. Again, I'm just bit re, re going back over the case. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. So we fix our eyes on what? Where do we fix our eyes? Because the eyes, our eyes, can often abort the seed of faith. Where do we fix our eyes? On what we see? No. Nope. Where do we fix our eyes on that which is unseen. Why? Because the see, things that we see, they're temporal. I mean, it's like ly lysine in tomatoes. They cause cancer, but now they are good for you. And like, you should... Eat this now. You shouldn't eat this. They change. Everything changes by generation. What is unseen is eternal. The begin eternal has no beginning and has no end. It kind of sounds like our God, doesn't it? Okay. So we fix our eyes. If I'm going to fix my eyes on eternal things, one of the one of the primary places I'm to look because sometimes you're like, what am I going to fix my eyes on an eternal thing? Ah. Uh, those dots we were talking about earlier? Like, like what? No, the, his words. So fix your eyes on his words. His words are eternal. They don't pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away, but not one, not one word. The Bible said, not one word. So to fix your eyes, fix your eyes on his word. Okay? Now, um, let me ask you this. Is, is the illogical logical? Is the illogical logical? Like things of the spirit don't make sense to the mind. To, to the natural man. We just had read this, that the things of the spirit, they're not naturally discerned. So it's kind of like this. How does a black cow eating green grass under a blue sky produce white milk? I don't know, but... It somehow happens. Now, I'm sure there's logic to it, but I don't understand at all how God made all of these things work. Why is, does, you, you, don't know, you understand what I'm saying. Um, but, but ultimately, the, the unrenewed mind is going to challenge, uh, challenge the word of God. Romans chapter 12, 1. Romans chapter 12, 1. Therefore, I urge you, in 1 and 2, I urge you, brothers, on account or in view of God's mercy, um, if you were to read, read commentary on this, you would see that Paul is, when he, he actually says, I beseech you or I beg of you because I see the mercy and the kindness of God that is so great. I, I, I say to you, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. What, the, what does that mean? Continually offered. This is, so, this is important for us to know. You can be raised in faith and not remain in faith. You can be raised in faith and not remain in faith. You could have grown up in a faith household, went to a faith church, you could have, and not remain in faith. Because no longer am I offering 
this body the, as a sacrifice, as a living sacrifice. Now, the sacrifice that I offer to God, I don't just offer to God whatever I want, however I want. You remember Cain and Abel? No, you offer it the way he asks. So you co- in order to offer anything as a sacrifice, you have to come under his word. This is key. The key to a renewed mind is coming under his word. Cain did it the way he wanted in the process of time. Abel did it according to what God's design. Okay? Let's keep going here. So he says, Offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. So do not, and then he says, verse 2, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. How are we transformed? By the renewing of our mind. So this word here, the, 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 the actual verb form of this word, renewing, is only used two times in the New Testament, two other times. This is actually the noun, the renewing of your mind. It doesn't speak of you actually doing it. It's just is describing it, so the noun. But the, the actual doing it, here's what it here, let me define it for you. It's referring to God's ever transforming of the believer. So he said, be transformed. In other words, God is continually changing me into a, an ever transformed. Like, I, never can you or me arrive. Never, never do we get to where the place where I know the word. But I'm continually offering my body to be changed and transformed because if, if not, what happens is the pressures of this world would like to teach me above what the word of God teaches and change the way I think and the way I act and the way I interact on his behalf. Okay? So, let's, let's keep going. So, faith comes. So, anyway, of the mind, renewing the mind. Then you will be able to attest and to approve what is good, pleasing, and the perfect will of God. God wants to work through us. He wants to be seen through us. Just as you saw the disciples, as you saw Jesus, he wants to see you. The Bible tells us to imitate him as he imitates the Father. Okay, We're to imitate Jesus. Let's keep going here. So I want to get to these, these two passages. I'm going to just give you these two passages. James chapter 4, 6 through 7. And then I'm going to give you the passage, 1 Peter 5, 5 through 9. Okay, and <clears throat> both of these passages, they're super similar. You're saying, I, I, I've heard these passages before, but let's just look at them real quick, and I want to pull out a few different things here uh, in, in these passages, James chapter 4, 6, and 7. But God gives more grace, more ex- hand extended to, to who? The humble, right? God, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So he says, submit yourselves then to God, or to the Spirit of God, or to, you could say, the Word of God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So humble meaning to be reliant rather than God-reliant rather than self-reliant. That's what humility is. Humility is God-reliant, not self-reliant. So he says, be God-reliant, not self-reliant, because your enemy, and he says, resist the enemy, diabolo, devil, diabolo, dia meaning like diameter, and balo, where we get the word ball, meaning to throw through. So here's how the devil works. And we'll see both of these. He talks about giving grace to the humble. So humility, grace. He talks about resisting or standing firm against your enemy, the devil, or the diabolo, the one who throws through something so completely thought out that it has no... There's no answer to it. There's no, it's so thoroughly thought through. It is the circumference. See, uh, see, a C has no circumference, but a circle does. Because C has a way out. But, but so this is how he works. So he throws the, this is, this is your enemy. He is, and it's so amazing, that God gave us a helper that is a standby. Para, like paramedic, the one who stands by to help you. Okay, para, cleat. One who stands by, and kletos means to make the call. So he stands by you, and it's just like that lawyer in the movie says, don't you say anything unless I tell you to say something. And then you're like, I wasn't there. And you're like, did I tell you to say that? You know, and, and you get yourself in trouble, right? But the way that the enemy works, he is the accuser of the brethren. He is the one that brings charges and questionings all the way from the beginning. This is how he, he, he is the questioner. 
He, when it says the accuser, it's the one who puts you on trial and asks you questions to get you to try to answer based on what he's asked instead of, instead of doing what? Yielding to what? The Holy Spirit, because in all your ways, acknowledge him. So how do I acknowledge him? John chapter 4 tells me this, that he gave me the Holy Spirit, the parakaleo, the paraclete, who stands right beside me to make the call. He's going to be a comforter to me, and he's going to remind me of everything that the Lord has said to me. So I have, it's just, it's so cool when you think about God and just and the courtroom of heaven and how he's raised us up to sit together with him. Like you just look at this and how you have an accuser in the enemy and what the accuser is constantly doing for everything from the garden to when he tempted Jesus in the wilderness to where you're in Revelation is he puts you on the questioning block and what he asks you is a question having been around a little longer than you, that is thought about so complete and has thrown so hard that it goes from one side to the other that now you've thought it through. And what you thought through is a completeness, and the only answer to that question is the word. So to resist the devil and, and he'll flee, Sometimes we think the devil is the pitchfork and the horns. But let me ask you this. Is fear of the devil? Okay. Anxiety? Lack. So the, de the devil has a lot. Of, he doesn't get credit for as much as he actually causes. In other words, he's not being resisted with the word. And so there is basic faith. You know, a push-up. Got it. Well, if you get the push-ups, 10 a day, 25 a day, 50 a day. Now we can put a couple plates on. But I'm not using my faith. I'm not even resisting the devil. How do I resist the devil? With the word of God. When he's around, he's jacking with you us all the time. It's authored by him. We don't wrestle against what we see. But against, this is Ephesians chapter 6. It's important to know this. It's important to know that God is spirit. And spirit, these things we're talking about, you just assigned, again, the word pneuma is spirit. It's breath, it's wind, it's spirit. The only thing that makes it holy is the word before or evil, the word before it. So the enemy is also spirit. And you know what he also has? Some really great breath. And you'll find that when he's breathing... The, the fruit in your and my life is what we talked about, and it should be resisted. This is how we begin to build faith. Okay? So it's important that we build faith. So James said, James 4, 6, 6 through 7, and 1 Peter 5, 7 and 8, and I'm going to close uh, with this passage and this small statement or small analogy. 1 Peter 5, 7, God opposes the proud. It sounds the same way, doesn't it? But he gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, come under, become God-dependent, not self-dependent, not I-dependent, Him-dependent, okay? Therefore, under God's mighty hand, I love that, get extended out towards you, so that in due time He may exalt you. Cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. God cares for you. His thoughts are to toward you. The word anxiety means to be pulled apart. So cast all your cares on Him. Cast all your cares, what does it say? It says, Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. When you are pulled apart, here's what I mean. The word anxiety literally means to be pulled in different directions. Where, you know, when you're anxious about something, you're pulled in different directions. So let me give you an anxious thought. Go to the doctor. Just sat in Wednesday night for six weeks hearing about divine healing. I want to believe that, but I've been having this palpitation in my heart, and I went to the doctor about this, and I've been praying about that palpitation for the last six weeks, and now when I hear this, I'm torn to believe this, but also to believe this. I want to believe this, but I'm torn over here, okay? So he says this, cast all, this is what you and I do with these things. He doesn't say, figure it out. He says, God, I'm going to give this to you. 
I'm going to give this to you. And the way I give this to you is I'm going to just give this to you, and I'm going to come under you. I'm going to come under you. I'm going to come under your word because you got to recognize when you're pulled apart, when you're being pulled in, uh, into different places, well, the very next verse, the devil is there, your adversary, the devil, the one who is throwing thoughts that it's like, that's exactly what that is because I Googled that. I think I have <laughs> something. And he's looking to devour you. And so it goes to that, that, that next verse, verse 8. It says, um, uh, it says, be so reminded, alert, your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. So what do you do? Resist. How do you resist? It is written. This is how you resist. So if you're going to walk, if you're going to ever exercise faith, you're going to have to be willing to call some things that you see not as though they are. This is faith. Because faith is not of the eyes. Faith is his, by his word, and his word is spirit. So you have to say, I am, I'm exercising my will over my body to declare what God said over what I see. So I resist the devil, the one who throws a thought that's so complete and looks like a case so built and the evidence was here and it was 9 o'clock and it was this and it was that and it was this and now, now I'm questioning. So It's so good that I question my testimony. When you and I no longer are holding fast to the confession of our faith, the case is almost over and it would be called a loss. When you and I question, we no longer are holding to our testimony. That case, now can you call it back to trial? Sure. But you're going to have to call it back to trial. Resist him, stand firm, hold, be resolute, hold fast, be unmoving in your what? Look, I'll put it back up there. Um, 8, verse 9. Resist him, Standing firm or holding fast in what? In your what? Somebody help me out. Does it say it up there? Oh, there it is. Stand, resist him. Standing firm in faith. What is faith? Coming under what God has said. So you and I, it's like we, we, there's, a, there's a suit that you can, I can put on. And that, it, that is in him. In faith. Come under him. Stand firm in him. God has said, it is written. What? Put that out there because you know that the family of other believers goes on to say, throughout the world is undergoing the same kinds of suffering. Oh, you're the only one. No, we're not going to go into that. So this is what I'm going to close with. This statement. If you believe and you've closed the case, that it is God's will on any matter. If it's God's will to heal, then I want to ask you this. Why do you need more evidence? If you've closed the case, if you've made the judgment, and you've said, this is what faith coming under God's word, what he says, and you've made the decree, because you're the jury's out with you. You have, you can either receive the word of God. As authority, and this is truth, and you get to make the call. You get to make the call. I can't make that call for you. O only you can make that call. But what I, what I had written down here today, faith is received, it's not understood. It's of the heart. It's not of the intellect. It's a substance of the things hoped for, evidence of what I don't see. So why am I looking to what I see? If it's evidence of what I don't see, why would I find proof with these eyes? When the case is settled in my heart, why do I still need evidence? It's awesome when somebody says, when there's a confirming witness. 
But the eyes of faith, they can see things that these eyes haven't seen yet. The eyes of faith can touch things that these hands haven't touched yet. The eyes of faith have heard things that these ears haven't heard yet. Have you ever heard, well done, on something from the Lord? Did these ears hear it? Anytime God speaks to you, was it with, did you hear these ears? Where did you hear it? The hidden man of the heart. So it's important for us to recognize as we're going into divine healing, as we're talking about the word, the, we're preaching the word of God. We're not explaining to try to prove we're, we're saying what God's Word says. And it's up to you or to me to receive. And here's the amazing thing is, when I hear the Word, light comes. And if I'll receive that Word, light stays. But when I don't receive that Word, I now am left in the dark with more questions. If, and I've asked people this if it's God's will for you to be healed, well, sometimes, okay, then you haven't settled, then God's a liar. God's a liar. That's, that's, God's a liar. Let's just settle that, and why are we here? This, this matters. It matters that we acknowledge who God says he is. And the reality is, he asks us, will I find faith when I come? You know, it's just like going to La Fiesta or El Torio or Subway. You walk in, you walk out, you're going to smell like it. Why? Because you've been there. In this world, there's a whole lot of knowledge. In the end days, the last days, knowledge will increase. Men will become lovers of themselves. They're going to look to themselves. They're going to call what is good evil and evil good. Whatever they decide to be right. And so by being in that place, it is easy for you and I to allow that scent, that way of thinking, and that approach to the rest, the way that the rest of the world is approaching their life, to allow that approach to be how we approach God, where we're now questioning based upon what we see or based upon some analytics that we find on here. Faith is simple. It's simple. It's not self-produced. It's authored by the Word of God. And all I have to do is come under and settle the case in my heart and testify and hold fast to the confession. Hold fast. Not one time, but hold fast to the confession of my faith. And you know what I'll find? I'll find a victory. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. I'll walk out of the courtroom. And you know, it's amazing. Nobody ever, nobody in faith ever died in sadness. They all died in joy. Death, it, you're going to have to exercise faith beyond the veil of this dispensation. In other words, when you get to heaven, it's not just whatever it will be, will be. It's you will rule and reign with him. And so this is what an opportunity. He said, you've been faithful. Faithful. Let's just not call faithful um, doing what I asked or being good or, you know, being diligent. Let's not call faithful diligence. Okay? Because faithful is not diligence. Faithful is doing and handling and honoring the word of a master. That's what faithful is. Diligence, you can do things, you can be diligent and not be faithful. Faithful is something where, somebody, where, where a master or somebody in authority can give you something and you do it the way they asked, when they asked, how they asked, with a proper heart. That's faithful. So let's make sure we know that he's going to look and he's looking for faithful. Where we come under that word and he said, you've been faithful with this little and I'm going to make you ruler over much. This is the word of God. Yes. And it's time that, that come into church and a, a, as the church of God, that we hold his word in that place of honor and we begin to go about doing.
doing what he said, and these signs would follow what? The preaching of the word. Go into all the world and preach the gospel, and these signs would follow. But I, I, I'm not here to, um, to, to, to argue the word. I'm not here to, uh, to I, I'm here to simply say this is what God said. And so when I see places that don't look like the kingdom of heaven, what do you tell me? Pray, pray here on earth as it is in heaven. That's what I would co commission you to do this week. When you see something that's not of God and it wants to speak to you, whether it's mammon or this or whatever it might be, resist the devil and make him flee. Resist the devil. How? By using, your, using his word. Put his word in your mouth. Right? We believe, therefore we speak. We Having the same spirit of faith, the Bible says, we believe, therefore we speak. Father, thank you for this word tonight. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being a teacher, for being such a gracious teacher, for being um, able to communicate what, what we are so limited in our language. Thank you that you're able to explain and, and give answers, uh, direction, peace, peace that passes understanding. Just casting that just giving that to the Lord we're going to give that to you Lord the peace and the peace that passes understanding will be a guard to our heart and our mind no longer robbed like advancing in the word like you're advancing I just have seen this in my heart you're advancing and you feel like you're growing in 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 faith and you're growing in the Lord um, but then all of a sudden it's like somebody comes in and just cleans house and robs you just to tell you, cast, the same way we looked at First Peter. Philippians says, cast your cares on the Lord. He tells us to cast all. And he says, in the peace of God, that passes un all understanding, surpasses, will be a guard over your heart and over your mind. And so the same way the enemy would love to come in and mark for and steal the word, he won't be able to because you gave this care to the Lord. And you're to know that he cares more for you than you could care for any person. And he cares more for them than you could care for any person. So we just say tonight, we trust you, Lord, and we honor you, and we thank you for your word, and we thank you for showing yourself strong on the behalf of your children. We thank you for your will to heal, and we'll make the call. You are the healer. You are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals us. We honor you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. And uh, 815 didn't happen, but God bless you. Have a good week. See you Sunday. <laughs>